right, welcome to another episode of The After Show. This one, we are going to be talking about the Cannonball episode. Now, first question, and believe me, we've had many questions like this. Are you guys ready? Yeah. What went wrong with the Cannonball test that ended up in someone's house? Yeah, I gotta say, quite simply, it was a freak accident. I mean, everything had to go exactly the way it did for that to actually happen. Yeah, I mean, we had all safety precautions set up. Uh, we had a hill that we were firing into, which was almost 100 feet tall, and we've been shooting into that hill many times on this show and have never had a problem. But for some reason, when it hit that berm, it skipped over and into the neighborhood. I mean, it was crazy, too. It was the base of the mountain. Yeah, I mean, this happened in a way that, that we have never seen with this particular setup. And, you know, it's just so weird. You, you cannot make something like this up. All right. How did you feel when you realized your cannonball had gone AWOL? My mind would not allow me to believe that that was what happened. That skipped all the way over the hill. And it's, it's not a small hill. I mean, it's, it's 100 feet up, and then the closest inhabited area is more than a quarter mile away. And I thought, you know what? We've been tweeting pictures of, during the day. Maybe somebody is like trying to, to punk us or something like that because it's just, I, I, all of these things went through my mind before actually believing that it had gone up and over and into a neighborhood. I know, we found out what actually had happened. I was horrified. I yeah, couldn't believe it. Absolutely horrified. Yeah. And we're just so thankful that nobody got hurt. I mean, as horrible as it was, nobody got injured. And that is the most important part. Now, you said in the show that you looked after the community as a whole. How did you do that? Well, I mean, we were very open with the dialogue with the community. We instantly went out there right after it happened. Jamie and Adam uh, did a press conference. We also held uh, meetings um, that, that people could come and, and talk to us, public hearings where they could come, ask us any questions that they wanted about it. Uh, we had outreach. We had barbecues. We, we went out to their science fairs, and we've been in constant communication with Dublin because that's a community we really care about. They've been very good to us. Yeah, and most importantly, we took care of the people whose properties were damaged right away. Yeah, and that's the important thing, that taking care of those people. Next question. If this story had happened in a foreign country, I figured that you'd claim it was a myth and you'd test it out. Do you agree? Absolutely. If I had read this, I would have never believed it. I mean, the way that cannonball behaved was outlandish, and I don't think we could actually replicate it even though we were there. All right. On to a lighter question. How long did it take you to make the stone balls, and why didn't you stick with technology of the time? Well, technology of the time would have taken a really long time, and we only had an afternoon. Yeah, and we needed a number of stone balls because we had multiple tests, and we just didn't have the time to sit there and carve it with old technology. I mean, you know, maybe a skilled mason could have made it in that amount of time, but you know what? In reality, it's not so much about making the balls as it is testing that theory of, of does it work as a projectile. Yeah, it wasn't the myth. Yeah. But once we found that masonry grinding machine, I mean, that yes. thing, like you could <laughs> knock out one of those balls in less than an hour. Yeah, it was, it was awesome. Cool. And it was really, you know, like perfect, perfectly round. All right, next question. Was that really kryptonite in the geology lab? Yes. Yes, it definitely. Was. So definitely. super in, yes. if you're super, stay away. Stay away from there. All right, next question. It looked to me like the steel cannonball did more damage than the stone ones. Was that right? No, I mean, I was right there, right next to it, and I, we were comparing by layers, and they, the stone cannonballs were going through the equivalent amount of yeah. layers. Especially the granite cannonball. The granite was so hard, and it did, I mean, it looked identical as far as damage goes to the steel cannonball. I think the thing that you might be seeing that might be confusing is that the different hardnesses of the balls reacted in different ways with the stone wall. Mm -hmm. And so, for example, the uh, the really soft sandstone was kind of pulverizing, whereas the granite was just punching right through. So it might have looked a little different, but the damage was equivalent. Yeah. I mean, I'd take a steel one over a oh, stone yes. one any day, yes. of course. Yes. But I mean, if you look at the damage that the steel ball did and the granite cannonball, it was two giant bricks that they smashed through. I mean, it was the exact same amount of damage. All right, last question. Any more canon myths? Not oh, for a while. No. Not, not that I've seen on the list. No, we're taking a break from that. All right, well, thank you so much for joining us for another After Show. We'll see you next time.